right guys what's up hope everybody's having a good day out there today thanks for tuning back in to check the video out today and much appreciated and today we're going to have a little bit of talk about the hydro waves the old color selectors ph monitors and all that type of stuff all these electronic gimmicks that are supposed to or non-gimmicks depending upon your point of view with that that are out there saying that they're going to help you catch more fish so i'm going to give you guys my opinion on it from what i've seen using them because i've used all three of them and I'd be curious to hear your guys' feedback too, if you guys have had any experience on them, but I think it's a topic we're talking about. But real quick here, before we get started, just wanna remind everybody, Johnny and I are wrapping up our fall lake map breakdowns on fishthemoment.com. If you guys are interested in purchasing any fall lake map breakdowns or any winter lake map breakdowns that we got coming up, we got just a great catalog, a great resource. Uh, you can go check them out at fishthemoment.com over there. Okay, let's talk a little bit about this HydroWave, color selector, pH monitor, all that type of stuff. Um, I wanna first talk, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about all three of them uh, in an overview, but then sort of go over all three of them individually first. I've used the color selector and the pH monitor with something that a lot of you guys that are just starting out fishing now, you may not know much about. This was a big deal back when I started fishing back in the mid 80s. Uh, Dr. Lauren Hill came out with the color, the, yeah, the color selector. Uh, there were some pros endorsing a pH monitor, that type of stuff. And uh, it, at first they caught on pretty good. A lot of people used them. But eventually what we found out with that, with the color selector and the pH monitor, that that may have been one small factor, but there was other overriding variables uh, within the environment that outweighed pH or color selecting things. Now I've heard of guys that have used the color selector effectively, but to me, I used it quite a bit and I never noticed any, any difference as far as in the fishing, because when you're talking about the color selector, it's basically the colors that bass can see the best. And that's only one element that causes bass to strike a lure is the, is the color. And we don't really know how bass you know, distinguish colors. I think there, there's been some educated guesses on it, some studies, but um, nobody knows, nobody has been inside of a bass's brain to actually see what they, you know, the colors that they react to. That's a real gray area in fishing is color on there. And what, what triggers certain bass to colors is something that we can only, the only way we can gauge how that is real or not is through reduct, repu, reproductible results uh, with our own experiences there. I don't think there's any, there, there's nothing, there's no definitive answer saying that, okay, this color is going to work best in this situation and vice versa. Same with the pH monitor. You know, pH was supposed to be uh, providing the, the, you know, the best uh, alkaline versus acidity in the water. Um, a lot of people back then that endorsed the pH monitor, they thought it was the most important thing in fishing. You had to be in that water that had the right pH balance or the bass wouldn't use it. But then again, you know, we found out that bass are really, really adaptable. They can live in brackish water. They can live in water that has low oxygen contents. They can, they can live in a lot of adverse conditions. So the pH monitor uh, faded out pretty quick. The hydro waves have been a little bit different. You've had a lot of high profile professionals endorse it, have vested interest in companies and that type of stuff. And it's something that is still in the forefront of, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the trend of that type of equipment, like the pH monitor, color selector, you know, hydro wave. I used the hydro wave for an entire season a few years ago. And, uh, I wanted, I wanted, yeah, I wanted it to work. I mean, I, I on paper, the idea sounds great. It's like when you're around a school of fish, um, you know, if you can do something to, to, uh, you know, trigger those strike reflexes and get a, some type of a frenzy going based upon things that, you know, cause them to bite nature, like, you know, shad moving, shad noises, crawfish movements, crawfish noises, that type of stuff. On paper, it makes a lot of sense that that should work. But guys, and this is a totally you know, non-biased, you know, uh, assessment of this thing. I used it extensively for a whole year and I experienced, I experimented with it all over the country. I used, I was fishing, you know, two different tours, 12 tournaments, and I didn't notice anything that, I didn't notice anything that stood out to me <clears throat> that caused me to catch more fish than I would normally. 
I never one single time when I was in a situation where I felt it could work, say if I was around some schooling fish or if I was around maybe an area that I was getting a lot of bites in and all of a sudden they quit biting um, and would use it, I never noticed any any type of reproductible result on it. Any, any type of like thing saying to me, man, that really <clears throat> turned those fish on <clears throat> and it really got these fish biting. And it's not because I had any prejudice against the unit. Um, I gave it a real fair, honest assessment, and I simply did not, the, to me, the thing did not work. It did, it did not work like people say it is. Now, you can make the argument, people can say the same thing about scent. You know, I'm a big believer in scent. I mean, I, I to me, I have, I've proven it that it makes a difference under certain situations over a course of using it for over 35 years. I've seen it make a difference. I've seen it with scent and without scent. Can you catch bass without scent? Obviously, you know, you can. You can catch a lot of bass without scent. I, a lot of times I don't use scent, but I have seen such specific situations where uh, you were fishing super slow moving baits that I simply got more strikes than anybody else that was fishing around me or with me. Now, the Hydra Wave, people can probably say the same thing about that. I mean, there's maybe some people out there that say, man, I've seen it work. You know, it works for me, but ultimately you don't know if it works or not because it's just like with the scent deal. Maybe in my own situation, I think scent works. I believe it that works, but there may be some other factors. It could be the time of the day. It could be just, you know, the, the feeding times. It could be a lot of combinations come together that, uh, you know, cause the fish to bite what I perceived was the scent. But to me, you know, if you intellectualize it and say, the bass do have some type of olfactory, highly evolved olfactory senses. If you can take the human scent away from something, or if you can put something to make it more natural, it's gonna it's gonna catch more bass. It's the same like down at Tabor Rock Lake. You can take a live crawdad down there, and you can catch 50 Kentucky bass on a live crawdad. But if you uh, uh, you know take a a crawfish imitator that looks exactly like a crawdad and doesn't smell like a crawdad, you may catch one or two bass. There's a big difference there on the thing. So from that standpoint, um, I know scent, you know, does work because bass can smell. But as far as the hydrowave guys, um, I just don't see it. I don't, I don't see the thing being an effective tool. I'm not saying it's a hundred percent gimmick. I'm not saying that the pH monitor or the color selector are just completely, you know, bunch of BS gimmicks, but um, I have not seen the effectiveness of it to the point where it makes me want to go out and buy one. Anyway, that's my analyzation of the thing. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I'd be curious to hear your opinions on the thing and your experiences. And uh, we'll talk later. See you.